Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and this video is being made for two audiences. One is you, which is kind of vague and ambiguous. One is anyone that is interested in homestead building, retreat building, having your own self-sufficient, sustainable retreat location. This video is for you. I'm gonna give a complete tour of this, my old homestead, the first homestead that I built. We're gonna go through the whole thing and exhaustively talk about all the different systems that make this house more sustainable, more resilient during emergency situations. The second audience is the new people that are gonna be living here. This is a video tour of the whole thing for you guys. I've had so many wonderful years here and I wanted to find just the right people to move into this place. And you guys are the ones that I chose out of everyone in the whole world. And you guys kind of chose me and chose this place too. And we're gonna go through everything in here as kind of like a get up to speed on how to operate this place. Let's start outside. Uh, the first uh, thing we have out here is just kind of cool stuff. Uh, this uh, bridge here was made out of recycled timbers and it goes over what could be a pretty cool area with flowers. We've already got some flowers uh, down here. There are some, um, you know, bulbs and things like that. These are daylilies over here. Daylilies are edible. The flowers are edible. The roots are edible. I think the leaves might even be edible, though I don't know how tasty they'd be. But Every part of a daylily is non-toxic. You can eat. You can eat it. You got to be careful that it's not an iris because irises look kind of similar and they are toxic. We got a couple trees here. Uh, this tree right here that you can see, it's got some uh, some leaves over here. This is a red maple. I grew this from a tiny little seedling, only that big. I love this tree and I really miss leaving it here. Uh, around it, we also have a cherry blossom tree. This uh, covers in white blossoms uh, in the usually around April. Uh, this is a pink cherry blossom tree right here, the one that has uh, kind of this like crack in the trunk right there. That was its graft point, otherwise it's completely healthy. Uh, that has a lot of pink flowers. And then this really tall tree that, well, not really tall, but tall compared to these other guys. This tall tree uh, that's sort of behind them, I'll show you where the trunk comes in right here. This is also a flowering tree. Here are the little little flower buds on it. Uh, this is a plum tree. This is gonna give you guys plums. Uh, one of the great things about uh, putting trees on your land is that you can, you know, get beautiful flower blossoms, but you can also get fruit off of them. And I kind of erred towards fruiting trees. Uh, this one is not a fruiting tree, but right here we have some lilacs. Uh, and, and just the general flower trees are good because they bring in the bees and the bees pollinate the fruit. We get a bunch of peach trees here. Here's a small peach tree. Here is the uh, trunk from it right here. Peach tree here, a larger peach tree right here. And you can see it has dropped a bunch of peaches from last year. Uh, some of these peach pits have actually sprouted. And here is one of the sprouted trees right here that grew from the seeds that came from one of these beautiful uh, peach trees and uh, the seeds are viable. So you can grow your own peach trees from them. Also on the ground over here, we have some more daylilies, again, edible. Uh, over here, we have more, more lilacs and we have two locations here where there are uh, these drop points for electric wiring. This is where you can hook up solar panels. Uh, this is the southern sky over here and you can position solar panels to gather sunlight from this direction. One of the uh, hookup points is right over there. This was gonna be a root cellar or a fallout shelter or just simply a uh, pond. Thought it could be kind of a neat pond if you put some pond liners in there. Had a couple of different ideas for that, but then we decided to move. Uh, we've got another drop point right here for more solar panels and they can just get run right there and they, they all go into the house over here. We've got one fire pit here, which you guys obviously already know because it clearly looks like a fire pit. Uh, and we've got the garden area. The garden area has raised beds that I built myself all along the periphery. It has that little archway over there. More raised beds over here. Uh, you know, some more wall here. It's kind of like a little knee wall. And in the center area is really, really good soil. Uh, in the back of this, naturally growing are stinging nettles. Actually, they're kind of spreading around the whole thing. Here are stinging nettles. Now you might wonder, why am I keeping stinging nettles in here? They sting. Uh, yes, they do, but they are also edible. You wouldn't want to eat them raw, but if you cook them, it deactivates the uh, stinging aspects of them, and they're actually pretty nutritious, and they grow completely wild 
in here and uh, it's a really great crop in this garden. I was uh, over here the other day and I gr just grabbed some of these stinging nettles so I could transplant them to my new location and I was digging through this dirt and this is just, this is just the best dirt in this garden. I've worked so hard to get this dirt nice and rich and black and, uh, and healthy and I miss it a lot. So you're welcome to that. <laughs> All right, uh, over here we have the uh, lower orchard, I kind of called it, and this has a bunch of, you can kind of see the pink flowers here, a bunch of peach trees, big peach tree here, big uh, medium peach tree here, and a medium peach tree over here. We also have a couple apple trees in here, and I'm mentioning these because sometimes the tree, you know, it may not look like it's something that's gonna give you fruit or anything, and I don't want anyone to like chop these down not realizing you're losing a whole apple tree. So here's one apple tree right here, and there's another one, not this here, but over here. This is an apple tree right here. So we got two apple trees, and there's actually one other apple tree uh, up at the top over there, and I will show that off before we go into the house. Here is a shed. This is where the uh, new people that are gonna be living here are very uh, considerately letting me store some of my stuff while I slowly move it out. Uh, and uh, this is, I guess, uh, sort of still my space here, but uh, once I finally do get my crap out of here It's gonna be a lot of great space for them. It is a essentially a mini house on the inside. It's super well insulated and uh, it has uh, I think two inches of foam on the walls and and uh, three inches on the ceiling, or it might be three on the walls, I forget. There's, there's several layers of foam, though, on there. It stays uh, above freezing, even in the middle of the winter. It's got a nice foundation around it, and uh, it's got a loft in the top. You could put a bed up there. It's a really functional little mini house. On the side here, it's got outdoor storage stuff. I think, uh, all in all, this is actually better than the shed that I built at my new location, uh, just because I, I was a little more ambitious because I was living here, and I didn't have to commute to work on it. But uh, this came out really nice. Uh, the windows are all salvage windows. And uh, it gets a lot of nice southern light here. So this could actually be a, a mini house someday. Oh. <laughs> Here's a very slippery stump that I almost <laughs> just slipped on. Uh, yeah, wood gets really slippery when it gets wet. Uh, there's a little fire pit here, which I actually did not create. This is the new people coming in. And this is a great place for a, a fire pit. Uh, it kind of overlooks the valley here. This is, a, this, is a, this is pretty cool what they created. It looks like they got a seat here too. That's pretty cool. You know, just making stuff out of, out of nature's bounty. That's, that's cool. I, I, I probably could uh, recommend uh, watching some knot videos, how to do knots online. And I say that as someone who I myself am pretty terrible at making knots as well. I, I think if I did knots, it'd probably look a lot like that. <laughs> uh, but uh, this is great. This is great. They've got a this kind of opened up and it looks down into the valley area there. This is a nice little spot here. Um, th this uh, this uh, location here gets early morning sun and uh, the reason I had leveled this out is that it looked up here with the sunrise coming over there and I put my big parabolic solar cooker uh, right in this spot. But this is great for, uh, for this kind of uh, use as well. Uh, we've got the woodshed here, which uh, has solar panels on it. The solar panels run down into the basement, uh, and I'll, I'll show you where that drop point is later. This woodshed, if you fill it up, you can use this wood to more than heat the house for the winter. And I say that as someone that likes to have, you know, the occasional 80 degree day in the middle of January where you're wearing shorts uh, and a t-shirt inside the house. So you can fit a lot of wood in here, and uh, it's more than you need. Noticing another stinging nettle here, right by the door. This one's actually, looks, the leaves on that look delectable. Uh, but, you know, you want to watch out, you don't get yourself stung. This is uh, the entrance to the greenhouse. We're going to go in there in a moment. But first, I want to pop over to uh, where we're having the, uh, the rainwater uh, collection. Uh, we collect rainwater off this roof. It goes into these uh, pipes that are on, presently on the ground. They, they connect up to here with some wires. Uh, they, they go underneath and the wires kind of hook on to these little guys and these are sort of adjustable so that, I'm sorry, these are sort of adjustable so you can get the angle right. They should all be correct for the angle at the moment. Uh, but they use these large, uh, these large, um, uh, what is this, uh, just uh, at a loss for words at the moment. Um, they are uh, drainage, uh, four inch drainage pipes uh, and I cut out the top of them to accept the water and then it uses a little pipe to shoot over into this area. I don't see the pipe. Oh, here's the pipe right here. Just uh, runs through there and it drops into the top of 
one of these rain barrels gets filtered on the screen there and uh, this rain barrel receives everything and then it propagates it out to all the other ones although I'm noticing now that something happened with my manifold here I I don't know I wonder what happened here did it get hit by something I don't know it, it looks like ice damage except that I left it all open so it shouldn't have had any water in it for the winter I'm not sure what's causing that, but um, for the new people coming in, don't worry, I won't blame you for that. I don't know what caused that. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see about getting that, that repaired for you guys. But anyway, the, uh, the water comes in through these two uh, uh, tubes, goes into the manifold, and then propagates out to all these other barrels, and uh, then comes down through here to go into the uh, greenhouse, where you can use it for whatever you want to use rainwater for. Uh, from the outside, you can see pretty well here. Uh, this is not a broken window. This is a perfectly intact window that has a low E film on the inside that has shattered. Uh, and while it looks horrible, it actually makes the window much more functional. The uh, low E film uh, is kind of a mirror and it keeps uh, thermal energy from going through the glass. And uh, that is good if you are having it on your house, I guess, and you want to keep your windows from losing heat to the outside. But for a greenhouse, it's actually pretty horrible. So um, as these windows age and the, uh, the low E films on them one by one pop like that, the windows actually become more effective, although they are pretty horrifying looking. Although in a c complete, without rule law, grid down collapse, you know, having a bunch of windows like that might scare people away. So it, it could be a security asset. Uh, but in, in the meantime, it, it makes the, uh, the windows work much more effectively. Let's go into the greenhouse area. We have an outdoor light here, which is actuated from the inside here. All these switches are covered up in uh, waterproof panels so that, you know, if you happen to be spraying or something like that, you don't have to worry about electrocuting yourself. Same for the electrical outlet. Uh, down there. By the way, this power circuit runs out to the shed, so the shed is on the same power circuit as the greenhouse. It may or may not be noted in the uh, uh, electrical box uh, as to that. This is, oh, this is the greenhouse that I miss so much. Uh, it was made all out of uh, salvaged boards from an old barn on the, the decking here. Uh, we've got gray water that runs out from the kitchen through this area. This is a pokeweed that has grown here like every year for, I don't know, at least five years. It uh, looks like it's kind of spreading over there. Pokeweed, fresh shoots. In fact, these shoots right here are edible, although when it gets older, it becomes toxic. That just keeps growing there every year, and um, the soil here is just really, really healthy because it's, it's just had so much organic material coming into it from the kitchen. Uh, there is an antenna here, which I, I think I might steal at some point. I built it myself and it was for extending the range on my, uh, my little radio inside. I might want to steal that though, because I, I put a lot of hard work into that lovely little antenna and it's tuned for Vermont Public Radio. <laughs> All right, uh, coming over here. Um, this is sort of a, a general sitting area. You guys already know that. You put the chairs down there and everything. Uh, beautiful work, the cleanup work that you guys have been doing here. Uh, we've got our ponds, which are just kind of growing algae at the moment, which is, I guess, freshening the air in here. Uh, we've got a filter set up. Uh, this is made uh, to filter water that's going to go in here. Now, you wouldn't want to put anything soapy in here, but if you put, like, I don't know, like just any kind of water, that's sediment or whatever, you pour it through the screened area, uh, and it, it, it goes into this holding tank, and then it slow trickles down into the bottom. There's like a little, a little cork. Uh, in the bottom here that is uh, has a hole drilled out in the middle of it and it slowly drips in. If the cork uh, clogs up, which it sometimes does because of sediment, I've got a little nail here that I just keep in this little hole in the side and the nail can go up inside and just clear the cork out and then you can pop the nail back here and then it'll start flowing again. Yeah, plants actually go, grow in here. There's uh, charcoal and stuff to try to clean the water out. At the moment with it being dried, a lot of the water is just going to go right down along the edges, but uh, as it uh, hydrates back up, the, water, the uh, dirt will kind of spread out and that'll start acting as a better filter again. And uh, it, that drops water into here. From here, the water obviously cascades through this little thing and this is sort of a matte filter that has plants grow out of it that's made to kind of slow down the trickle. It trickles from there down into the lower thing 
here. And this thing, this lower one, can overfill. You can overflow it and it'll go down all over the side. And that's really kind of terrible because that, you know, can rot the wood out. Uh, but there's a little gravity siphon here. It goes up, over, through here, and drops it into here. And uh, from here, uh, you can fill, use, you can use this thing to, uh, to fill up uh, buckets and things like that. Oh, there's some water dripping out right the at the bottom there. You can use this to fill up wa uh, buckets for, you know, uh, watering plants or whatever, and it's great water because if you've got fish or whatever in these tanks, uh, you know, all their wonderful fish excrements and things like that are ending up in here, and it makes the water that you, you are getting out of there really effective for watering plants. Uh, at the moment, this is a brown house, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, come, come summer, as long as there's a little bit of moisture in that soil, it gets very, very green, very, very bushy. Uh, and there's a little overflow on this, this bucket here that just kind of flows off and, and slowly waters all that. You can make little, little paths through the soil to, to trace that. But very important, don't throw water into the upper uh, area because uh, it's going to flow into the lower area unless you have the gravity siphon hooked up here. And I, I just usually use like a little, uh, like a little pump to, to suck the water through that tube. And once you get the siphon going, uh, you know, it seems to work out all right. Uh, that, that, that's something where there's room for improvement, I think. And I actually started doing it, drilling a hole through here so it doesn't have to go oh, so high and over it and everything. If this thing could just go snake right through right around the corner, it'd be a lot easier to get the siphon going. Uh, and I, that was something I was working on uh, with just a, a drill, uh, but I never finished it. All right, uh, spinning around over here, lower greenhouse, pretty self-explanatory. It's, it's just a bit of a living space. Here, there's a little cupboard up over there, you know, nothing revolutionary. Uh, we do have a pull-up bar, and the pull-up bar hooks onto these little hooks here. I see one hook here, and the other hook is missing. I'm not sure when that got removed. Uh, maybe you guys removed that. I'm not sure, but uh, if you replace that hook, you can put the pull-up bar here, and it's a good place for doing uh, pull-ups uh, down in this lower area. I had installed it because a lot of times River, my boy, would like to play in this low, oh, I really miss this greenhouse, it's really beautiful. Uh, but River would like to play in this area here and I could kind of exercise while he was doing his play so we could both get stuff done. Uh, we've got this door, looks like it got a little unlocked. Make sure when you close this, it goes up, but you also wanna push the, uh, the bolt to the side so it can't gravity just fall out. So you wanna make sure that that kind of engages up in there so that your, your door doesn't just uh, blow open later on. Uh, this is the entrance to the lower levels of the house, but it's locked, so I'm gonna go around. We got a huge pile of ash from fires uh, from over the winter. This stuff is great to just, uh, you know, just scoop it up, throw it into the garden, and it's really helpful in the garden. Uh, ash is not great for compost. You don't wanna put it in your compost. Uh, I, I, apparently it uh, impedes the uh, the uh, development of the compost, but uh, it's a great uh, direct amendment right into gardens. Okay, coming around here, little reading nook up there. It looks like there's a chair. I, I always thought like maybe like some pads and a pillow would be kind of nice over there. And these beautiful little stairs that I custom made here while River was watching me. I have a lot of great memories in this house. Okay, right, I'm gonna pop up over here. I don't think I need to be uh, explicit in saying be really careful with this bug zapper because there's no protective cage around it. That uh, was built for a specific purpose at some point and uh, it's no longer being used for that, but <laughs> obviously be careful about that. All right, coming into the house, I just switched the camera to indoor light settings so we can actually see some stuff. Uh, nice loft area up there. Uh, that was just a way of taking uh, advantage of some of the extra space. Uh, up here. It was not part of the original design to have a loft space up here, uh, but when I was working on the collar ties up here, I, uh, if I can get it stable enough so you can see, I looked out across all the other collar ties and, and just said to myself, wow, what a beautiful space this would be if you put some decking boards up here and you know, you could have like a, you know, a little loft bedroom or something like that. So that's what uh, originated the idea for this space here. Uh, and uh, I'm glad I created it. I usually used it for storage, but uh, uh, when I was building, it was kind of a nice place for uh, uh, you know, creating a space for a bed. Uh, in the closet area over here, there's a little closet area. There is access to the, uh, let me open up the door to get a little bit more light in here. Uh, there is access to the plumbing. I, I never made a, a little uh, hatch covering for this, but if someday the uh, 
the plumbing for the bathroom ever fails, which they always do eventually, it has super easy access. You don't have to cut through the walls or anything like that. Uh, just above that, I'm going to pan up here just in the upper part of the closet, there is a secret hatch up there. You can see the little handle. You can open that up and you can store things above the um, shower area. Just be careful you don't hit the, uh, the vent pipes and things like that, but it's kind of a neat secret storage uh, space. Also above the closet there is another little attic to the closet. You can put things up on top there, which is kind of handy as well. Uh, we've got, okay, I should, I should tell you, you guys about this. This is a camera that <laughs> <laughs> that I grabbed that it's not attached to anything. I'm just gonna pull the wire out. It's just a like security camera looking thing and I had a wire <laughs> running to it and uh, that's it's never been hooked up. It was just completely a joke uh, because we were having a party and when the guests came I wanted them to sit on the toilet and when you're on the toilet you're looking right at this sign here that says smile for your protection this area under video surveillance. <laughs> And this is in the bathroom, so you're sitting on the toilet, and you see that sign, and then you look up, and there's an actual camera up there. The thing, I mean, you know, feel free to take that down. It was just a joke that I never, I never removed. Uh, or feel free to keep it up. I think it's hilarious. Uh, in the bathroom here, uh, there is a little note above the, above the sink. It talks about how th there's gray water collection underneath. That used to be the case under the sink, but now it just uh, plums right into the uh, septic system. But it is pretty easy to throw a jug under there and collect your gray water. Uh, but you don't really tend to get that much from the bathroom sink. I mean, it's just from like teeth brushing or whatever. Uh, so you, you don't really actually save that much water. And also it's pretty easy to forget about the jug and then accidentally overfill it and then it's a mess and it's gross. So I, I would recommend against <laughs> doing that. Uh, let's see, what else we have here? Little cupboards, things of that nature. Oh, above this uh, closet, there is a little space which is pretty good for wine bottles. You can fit a lot of wine bottles up there. I don't know if, uh, in terms of temperature uh, and all that stuff, it's the best place, but they do fit. And uh, I just, you know, I wasn't sure what to do with the space. The closet itself is made out of salvage boards, and, uh, you know, it just has a lot of extra useful space. I, I feel like when you're designing a house, often, at least if you're me, sometimes you forget about the things like storage space, like where are you going to put your vacuum cleaner? This is a great place for a vacuum cleaner right through here. It's also a good place for a printer. What I, I ended up doing is I, I made a little uh, USB port here, and if you were to put a computer on this platform, you can put the printer in the closet, and you can just plug the printer in through the wall. It keeps it all nice and, and tidy. That's, that's what I had done there. Uh, we still have a couple rugs down here. I'd be happy to take those. In fact, the one on top I really love. I'd be happy to get that back uh, later on. Uh, but there's a bunch of furniture on it right now, so I'm not going to mess with that. But uh, yeah, we, I would definitely love to get the rugs at some point, and I don't think you guys would miss them because, at least the one on the bottom, they're horrible. So, uh, you know, I can grab those from you guys at your, your leisure. Uh, got a nice pot rack for everything in the kitchen. I find that that is super helpful for just, you know, taking up taking things out of cabinets, making them more accessible. And the nice thing about this pot rack is it's right over the sink, so you can hang pots up when they're still a little wet and they'll drip into the sink. Uh, all around the windows, I, I notice all the curtains are down. Uh, you know, you guys can get your own curtains or you can, you know, keep the ones that I had here. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever's your preference on that is totally fine by me. Uh, the controls for the fan up there are down here. It's got kind of a uh, fader setting and it's pretty good at moving air around in this space. Here's the uh, pull-up bar that can also be moved into the uh, greenhouse. I think that pretty much covers the kitchen area. Um, yeah, pretty much. Other than to say, uh, just above here there's some hooks above, above here. Uh, you can uh, hang like nice little glass jugs and things. I, I would put ju glass jugs full of rice and things up there and that's what I use that space for. All right, let's uh, head downstairs. Oh, we got a, a hidden little spice rack down there. One of the great things about building your own house is you can uh, just add all sorts of, uh, you know, uh, cool little uh, uh, storage features. Like, and here's one right here, right, right on the stairs going down. There was a mini bookshelf, which uh, you know I just use for small books and things. And uh, it, it's just nice that you can you can hide storage in a lot of different places. And here's another example of that, uh, right at the bottom of the stairs. Uh, Right down here, there is a platform, and this platform under the stairs, this is a landing, 
and uh, th there's a hatch right there that you can just grab right from this side and pull it straight up. I demonstrate, except there's no one to hold the camera. So yeah, you can store quite a bit of stuff under there. It can get a little humid down there, so I wouldn't put anything that, you know, you, you know, can't afford to get humid. But it's, uh, I kept my camping gear under there. I found it was a good place for camping gear. Uh, wood stove is over here. There's temperature settings on there. Obviously, you got to get up to speed on how to do, uh, you know, wood stove fires. Uh, you know, you don't want it to get too hot, and you know, we, uh, we can talk about all the specifics about that kind of thing. But I love wood stove heat. It's great in an emergency. You can go outside, you can get sticks, you can keep yourself warm in the winter. You know, power can go out and you can still keep yourself warm, and that's such an important uh, thing to do. All the, the stones on the back there, and this is another one of my favorite parts of the house. All those stones, those were all just field stones from around here. Uh, from uh, when we were doing the build, I, I, I collected the nicer ones and put them all up there, and that's, I think it came out really beautifully. I really, ah, uh, memories. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, we also have, you know, there's these nice little uh, columns that were also, uh, you know, just made out of local trees that we found. The stereo system over here uh, is wired, so there's, you know, speakers there, and it's all surround sound. There's a subwoofer. As back behind this carpet here. Again, I'd be happy to grab that carpet too. <coughs> um, and then that stuff's all wired right through the wall. It all just goes right, right through this area. And uh, yeah, you guys are feel, uh, feel free to hang on to that, that uh, stereo system if you would like to hang on to it for a while because uh, I have no use for it at the moment. Uh, this thing here, I should explain, is a aquarium. Uh, a wall aquarium, again, tucking things into weird spaces. I don't know how great of an idea it was. Uh, it was supposed to be a kid's room on the other side of this wall here. Let's go in here. Uh, there's a bunk bed here, which I built myself, and it's made to be easily disassemblable. Uh, there are just a couple um, uh, bolt connection points, uh, so it, it comes apart uh, in some pretty basic pieces and you know, makes it easy to move. I would love to take this bunk later on if you guys don't have any use for it. Um, and the, the ladder is made from you know, just basic uh, uh, logs that we found here and uh, got all shaped to size. Uh, this uh, shelf right here is both a shelf and a door. The shelf uh, uh, has a, a few screw connection points. I think there's four screw connection points. And the shelf can completely remove from the wall, leaving a huge open space there. And the advantage of that is that what's behind that wall is the utility room. And So if you ever need to get anything big in or out of the utility room, you can pull it through, uh, you know, pull that shelf out, and you got a huge hole to move things in and out of. And then this window here, is the largest uh, dimension window in the house. Uh, well, there's another one just like it, but of, of all the windows, the, this style is the largest dimension. So you can bring something through this window and then it can go through there if you need to get it in. Uh, we've got inside the closet down here, I can't imagine you can see much of anything down in there, but there are, there are some pipes that come out of the wall and those pipes are related to um, a heating system that was never needed but is, uh, there's a potential to put it together. There, uh, there are radiant tubes that are running through uh, this stuff here, all this rock. There are radiant tubes behind that rock. So as the rock heats up when the wood stove gets used, uh, it, it would heat any liquid that's inside of those pipes, and that would allow you to gather heat from that surface. And there's another little port right over here uh, there's an access panel, and uh, if you remove this access panel down on the floor here, there are a few pipes uh, that come out of the floor, and those run to huge thermal beds underneath the, the stone here, and underneath the stone here, and underneath the bedroom floor over there. So you have the potential of grabbing heat from the fire and then pumping it down into the floor through these... Uh, uh, you know, radiant beds. I never found that it was necessary, but if you ever wanted to create a more passive, meaning passive for you, system to heat the house, you could put it like a little water heater uh, back in that closet and the water heater would uh, heat the water, pump it under the floor, and then, you know, you wouldn't have to lug logs into the house. It never bothered me to do, do log lugging, uh, you know, so I never finish a system, but it's there. It's under the floor. There's a lot of time invested down under that floor, and it's, uh, you know, it's ready to be used 
if you ever have interest. Now we came into this bedroom initially because of this thing. So this was supposed to be a kid's bedroom and I just thought it'd be neat to have kind of like an aquarium. You know, when I was a little kid, I remember I had like a little aquarium just with like pond life. And I was thinking about kind of recreating that here. Now the only problem with this is it, it never really got that much sunlight. Uh, so, you know, things didn't tend to thrive. Now there is, there's plenty of life in there, but it's all pretty much microscopic stuff. Uh, in fact, you can see right on the glass here, perhaps if I get close enough, there are little trails of things that are crawling around in there. So there are, there are things moving around, there's life in there. Uh, but it was never particularly large. But anyway, I thought it'd be kind of neat for a kid's room because it's a way of, uh, you know, just having a little bit of outdoors, indoors. Uh, giant library possibilities here uh, on that wall, obviously. Uh, and uh, one of the nice things about all these windows down here is that if you open up these windows that go out to the greenhouse, and then you open up upstairs the little windows that are just above the kitchen counter, uh, the heat from the greenhouse, when the, when the greenhouse is warm, will be gathered and it'll draw the cool air from the basement and it'll push it up into the kitchen area. So it's a nice way of creating kind of a uh, convection cycle that will kind of warm up the house just by the, the greenhouse doing what the greenhouse does. So uh, little cracks in the windows down here, draws air out and then goes, uh, goes upstairs. Let's go into, uh, back into the utility room. Here, and I'm going to see about turning on a light here because it's kind of dark. Let's see, breaker, and we want to turn on the office light. I consider this the office back here because this is where I, I did my work. Oh, you know what? I, I bet the main breaker's turned off too. Let's see. Main breaker's turned off. Okay. Here we go. So we're coming back. And there we go. All right, so there's obviously a lot of uh, clutter in, in here, uh, but you know, this will this will tidy up uh, reasonably quickly, I would imagine. Just cardboard, and cardboard's great for fires. Um, some of this stuff is from me. Some of this stuff is from uh, Josh, who had been here for a little bit, uh, but um, you know, from my perspective, there's nothing sacred here. So uh, any of this cardboard that you want to go through, even my boy's fort, which is still here, you know, feel, please feel free to use that for fires and such. Uh, I do have a desk under here that I'd love to grab at some point. It's just, it's been kind of uh, covered in cardboard, so I haven't been able to grab it the last couple of times. And also this little frame on the wall, I would be very happy to take that off. That holds monitors uh, for work. Um, but uh, yeah, otherwise, you know, feel free to get rid of any of that cardboard and everything. Uh, over here, we have a vent, which uh, I, I kind of started setting up. This is a vent that grabs cool air from this room and pumps it up into the upstairs, what I was, had been using as a bedroom. Uh, it uses this uh, uh, ventilation system from like uh, greenhouses and things, and uh, you just plug it in. You can plug it into a, a dimmer circuit, so you can kind of modulate how fast it's it's blowing and it just uh, grabs air from down here uh, in this little box and running into the box I put a dehumidifier. The dehumidifier can pull right away from there but it grabs that low corner air and then it'll push it up into the, uh, the upstairs bedroom and that makes the bedroom cool even in the summertime. The downstairs always stays cool and comfortable all year round even in the summer. Come down to the the living space down in the, the lower area and it's it's always comfortable down here. It's a real treat to be able to come down here. Um, and in the wintertime, it's, uh, you know, usually kind of just about the same temperature. It's, uh, it's just, uh, it's a nice living space. While I'm back out here, I just want to mention, we do have a switch here. Uh, and this controls where the, the water from the kitchen sink goes. In the configuration it's in right now, it's pointing the water out towards the greenhouse. It's headed towards the white pipe. But if you were going to dump something down in your sink that you did not want to go out into the greenhouse, you just flip that valve in the other direction and it'll go out to the septic system. All right, popping back into the utility room here. Uh, these vents up in the top, one is for the uh, dryer, which I never use and I don't actually even have a dryer up there because I just did line drying. Uh, and the other one is for the, uh, uh, the, the shower, the, the, the shower uh, exhaust. Uh, we've got some screens 
Uh, up here, these go to the windows, you know, uh, that are, uh, you know, around the house. That's where the extra screens are. Uh, obviously, I think we've uh, gone over that we've got all these cupboards here. It's great to have a lot of cupboards for your pantry and everything. Uh, and I'm going to turn a little bit of light on here in the uh, in this basement area. All right, and see if we can get some lights on in here, and just kind of go over some things here. Uh, this this switch here uh, activates the light up there, so you can see in this general area. Uh, water heater tank, uh, you know, that's a water heater. It's all uh, insulated, and that, that helps with, uh, you know, just uh, not using as much energy. This is the back side of that, uh, that shelf unit in the, other, uh, in the other room, so that's where the entry point would be. Over here, uh, this switch here is for the internet, so this will turn the, all the internet plugged in stuff on or off, and that's just by virtue of the fact that this switch activates this outlet and this uh, plugs into the power strip, which all the internet stuff is plugged into. This is the modem, and then this is the router right here. So, uh, you know, the internet comes into the, the modem, and then the router kind of splits it off everywhere, and, and it's a wireless um, wireless unit that uh, sends it out and uh, you know you can grab a password for, for that. Uh, pressure tank for the well right here you know pretty self-explanatory. Uh, breaker box is over here. One one thing that's a little bit uh, different about this, so I'm going to put that back down. Um, I, I have a couple of these taped off that just because they never get used. One says electric heat uh, and one says clothes dryer. I just they never got used so they're always always taped off. Um, one thing to note here is that there is one here for refrigerator. This, this breaker right here says refridge. Uh, this one uh, had been the refrigerator, but then we had uh, changed it so the refrigerator was running off of the solar panels. And it, uh, what we did instead is that we had the refrigerator come down to be this. So this, whatever this gets plugged into, powers the fridge. Now, I've just been keeping it plugged into here, uh, and that is the basement and the outlet below here, um, which I can turn on and off like that. Um, but that, that could be plugged into an inverter or something, and the reason that I, I done that was because up here is where those wires from those uh, solar outlet uh, drops outside were. Remember, right? there were those two little gray things outside. Uh, they run to these wires here, and then these wires can connect to batteries and inverters and things like that. I had had them set up on this surface here. In fact, you can still see the uh, the dust silhouettes from the batteries having been uh, sitting up uh, on there. Uh, and uh, and that way, uh, you know, if the power ever went out, and it did go out, you know, maybe a couple times a year, we go out for like a day or so. Um, and that way, you can uh, run the refrigerator. You have a choice of running it off of power outlet, running it from the grid, or running it from you know, whatever you might choose to set up on your own over here. This, incidentally, is an epoxy kit, uh, which I figured I would leave here. I just never got around to doing it. It was to touch up the uh, the horror bathtub, which is all rusty upstairs. <laughs> Completely sanitary, but kind of horribly rusty. Uh, let's see, do we have anything else here? Obviously just toilet, plumbing, stuff like that. This, uh, this little thing here was going to be grabbing uh, air down from the basement and uh, running it up into the bathroom area. It was just going to be another way of kind of circulating air, but it just never really proved all that necessary and I never finished the project. Uh, we got some uh, shelving units over here. They're pretty sturdy, uh, you know, because they're braced out pretty well. Uh, you know, don't, don't uh, you know, go uh, having a dance party on them or anything, but they can, they can hold a reasonable amount of weight on there uh, also. So let's uh, turn off all these uh, these lights and everything. Kill this stuff. All right, and we're going to head back out of this direction. All right. uh, I see tucked in here, we have some of the supplies for the chimney. Uh, one was to uh, put in some more uh, glass braids to uh, keep the, uh, the thing from leaking or anything. And uh, this longer thing is an emergency item for uh, you know, preventing a chimney fire. So, I think that gives you a pretty decent rundown of 
everything that's been going on here. Uh, you can see that a lot of the things that were created for this place were the idea of being able to function if the power went out. You know, we have the solar panels so that they could uh, run the refrigerator, you know, if you have the battery backup. We have the wood stove, so you know, again, if the power goes out, you're not, you're not freezing. You, you, you can keep yourself warm. And th those are kind of the big things. Keeping yourself warm, uh, keeping yourself, um, uh, you know, access to food in the refrigerator. Uh, and, and the third leg of that stool is keeping access to water. And that was another thing that I had is I had a large pressure, uh, a large water storage tank, which ran to a pressure pump so that um, the, the house could have access to water because the well, you know, runs on electric power. And, uh, you know, if the power ever went out, I had this large storage tank, it held 170 gallons of water, and we would be able to use that water, you know, 170 gallons of water during normal times. A lot of times people could piss through that really quick, you know, if you're washing laundry or, you know, taking long showers or whatever. But if you know you have a, a scarce amount of water, 170 gallons can go a long, long time. So, uh, so th th those were kind of the three things that I was always sensitive to keeping things warm, keeping your refrigerator working so you don't lose food, and keeping yourself having access to water. So, so that, that's the place. It's, it's a lot of memories in here. I've worked on it for many, many years. Uh, a lot of lessons learned. Uh, you know, when we're building our new place, but I, this was a, you know, this was our first place where River grew up, and uh, it's a lot of nice memories in here. And I did a really, really good job for you guys, the next people who are going to move in. I hope that you guys. Enjoy it. I hope you uh, you know appreciate some of the things that I put in here. I I, I hope that you, you never have to use them, but I know that it's going to come up because you know there's always things where like there's a storm, the power goes out or whatever, and uh, you know it's nice to be in an environment where you know even in the dead of winter, even if you know you ran out of firewood, this house is so well insulated that it doesn't go below freezing in the house. So you know it's just it's nice to have that kind of foresight that sometimes things go wrong. So when they do go wrong, you know. You know, it's not as bad as it would be otherwise. It might be a pain in the butt. It might be a hassle. It may not be as comfortable. But you know, it's not as dreadful as it would be as if you hadn't prepared at all. So, so I'm, I'm handing my baby off to you guys. And I hope everyone else watching this video, if you're still watching this video after this whole thing, it maybe has given you some ideas about things that you might want to do in your own house, things that you might want to consider if you ever do your own build. Uh, there are so many different things that you can do that are improvements over kind of the normal way that a lot of people operate, a lot of different ways that people build. And if you kind of do things on your own, there's a lot of opportunities for improvement in a lot of different uh, areas. And uh, the best advice I could just give you is just, just go out and try because I've worked a lot with professionals and it's it's hard to do worse than professionals a lot of times, unfortunately speaking. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.